Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Tommy C, and this is In the Crease with Tommy C, the most politically incorrect hockey show. I want you to give it a chance before you click up, go up in the right there and click X. We're going to be talking about John Bellevue today and a lot of issues in the National Hockey League, like fans do, like it's supposed to be done. Stick around. This is In the Crease with Tommy C. with Tommy C and my point man for today, the Toronto Kid. Where is the whereabouts of the Toronto Kid? None other than DBS Dave Rose. Dave, what's happening, everyone? What's going on, man? After a little slight hiatus, I am back here on In the Crease. Yeah! Uh, here we go. Uh, sorry, uh, we had a... I Actually, um, my the reason I was down yesterday is it wasn't the wire that I thought it was. It was actually a wire that was not connected to the computer that was actually giving off line noise and being picked up by my stereo. So that's one of the reasons we didn't do. Please, please, please. It took a lot of heat. I'm getting a lot of heat that I'm not doing this every day. Look, when I get a job, you're all out of luck. Uh, second of all, um, second of all, it really wasn't my fault, but I actually, I knocked the wire out of the stereo that was actually connected to my television. And when I knocked it out, the uh, buzzing sound just went away. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It's a twisted wire. Some of these wires are old. And I stole most of them from the military when I was there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Cree's always good. I didn't steal anything. I acquisition. Never... Yeah, acquisition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's actually what you say. You, you, uh, what, what, that's like the saying we have in the Army, too. I forget how they um, – you, you don't steal anything. You acquire it. And, and the truth is everybody is – because it's the people's stuff. The way we see it is we can steal anything we want because it's not like we're stealing because it's being used by the military. <laughs> it's already been bought and paid for. Yeah, yeah, it's already your paid for. I, can't st I cannot steal from you. It's impossible for me to steal from you. It's the Army's equipment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, I wanted to be uh, kind of over the top and a bit obnoxious like I usually am, but I can't. Uh, because hockey's faced a great tragedy, and hockey's been going through a lot of tragedies as of late, um, especially with Gordy Howe being sick, and um, you know you have this. Uh, um, you know, it's it's, it's it, it, believe it or not, and we have a different opinion on it. The Slava Void off situation is tragic. Um, you know, there's good things going on too. It's been a hell of a season, but uh, the great John Bellevue um, has passed away. Um, of course, he had he's uh one of the uh, captains of the montreal canadians played 20 seasons and out of 10 of them 10 of them won 10 stanley cups uh john bellevue uh you know i i wonder if because i mean he's called the gentleman he was considered such a gentleman i wonder it's why he doesn't get mentioned in the same contacts of of gordy howe and uh, uh, maybe a Mary Lemieux. He's not in the upper echelon, but we're talking about a top 10 player maybe all time. Actually, uh, but... um, quite the opposite. I wanted to mention that I was reading a lot of what's uh, been coming out of La Belle Provence yeah. um, due to uh, Bellevue's death. And uh, many people were indicating that with other hockey legends, perhaps like Bobby Orr, they'd say, hey, Bobby, how's it going? But with, with uh, Jean Bellevue, it was always, hi, Mr. Bellevue. Apparently, the amount of respect that uh, the really? Quebecois have for him is incredible and Twitter's blown up uh, yes. with uh, people uh, showing their condolences and showing support for the Canadian so yeah. I, I well maybe I should rephrase maybe I use the wrong choice of words Dave you're absolutely right I mean I've, I've seen Twitter blowing up every uh, I mean my Twitter account is basically a, a, a hockey news ticker and uh, basically what I saw was was nothing but respect but I guess I'm talking about like what do we talk about when we talk about the five best players of all time we talk but about you have a good point that he's not really like, mentioned in the first no. um, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that might be indicative of perhaps that he was just um, centered entirely in Quebec. And, um, sure. So, but I want to I actually go into some details for the audience so they understand a little bit better, especially uh, those that might not be in Canada, why uh, Jean Beliveau was uh, considered so great. Okay, go right ahead. All right, well, he, he passed away at age 83 due to multiple uh, health complications. He was born August 31st, 1931 in Victoriaville, Quebec, the eldest of eight children, so a good Catholic family. 
Mm -hmm. But by the time that he was a teenager, he actually turned down the Canadiens' offer for three consecutive seasons because he was actually getting paid better than most pros as an amateur with the Quebec Aces in the old Quebec Senior Hockey League. No he actually claimed publicly that he was a loyal fan of the, of, uh, the Habs, um, and the fans themselves were actually calling uh, the Quebec Colisée the house that Jean built. Mm -hmm. But because of this, uh, Habs GM Frank Selke convinced the Canadians owner to buy out the entire league. And because of that purchase, exactly, because of that pay, purchase, they could have just they now, paid the guy <laughs> to yeah. buy the whole league. So go due ahead, to that no. uh, transfer, they owned uh, his professional rights and Beliveau would go on to sign what would end up being a five-year contract worth over $100,000. And big that's money. in uh, 1950. That's when he first started. That's big money. Though. I mean, you're, basically, you're basically essentially a millionaire in those. Absolutely. Kind of and he, he played center. Retired in 1971, but between those uh, 21 years, mm -hmm. he played part of 20 seasons for the, all for the Canadiens. Oh, as a God. player, he won the Stanley Cup 10 times, and as an executive, he was part of another sem seven championship teams, the oh, most Stanley Cup victories by an individual to date. That's in, in total, he scored 507 goals, mm -hmm. 712 assists, in 1,125 games over those 20 seasons, all as a Montreal Canadien. No, he was the did. first player to win the Conn Smythe Trophy as a Stanley Cup Playoffs MVP, capturing it in 1965. And he was inducted the year after his retirement into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1972. Now, which I just means, want to mention a few other things here. Which means they had to make here. an exception to the rule, if I'm not mistaken, because you Absolutely, have to be it's an exception to the rule. Yeah, it, which was a good exception in this particular case. Uh, but they really shouldn't be waiting till people die to induct them into the Hall of no, Fame. No, no. Like, like uh, Don Cherry said with uh, the Gila Point. Good now, I would love to add on to that, um, uh, how you started off with this. He's not, uh, Beliveau is not really mentioned in the first breath when it comes to the greatest hockey players. But this is a quote coming directly from... Um, from Gretzky, uh, he actually mentioned that years later, um, the um, Conn Smythe Trophy should be renamed the Jean Beliveau Trophy. And okay. he actually, Gretzky wrote a part of the foreword for Beliveau's biography. And I just want to quote this because this really explains the respect mm -hmm. that people have for him. Quote, okay. Having had the good fortune to win four Stanley Cups in my career and to experience the satisfaction and lifelong friendships that are generated by such a difficult and collective effort, it is mind-boggling to recall that Jean Beliveau accomplished the feat no fewer than ten times as a player and seven times more as a senior executive with the same organization. I don't think there can be any other figure in the history of professional team sports who better exemplifies the word winner. End quote. Bingo. Can I read a few things to you that I got here? I got uh, tweets from P.K. Subban. I met John, bon, John Bellevue. I, I, I want to start sounding like I'm French, even though I'm like an East Coast obnoxious uh, East Coast guy. I met John Bellevue when I was 10 years old. That's when I knew I wanted to play for the, uh, for the Canadians. Uh, Brandon Prust, a true legend, passed away. I'm, uh, th th this, this says something about it because uh, Prust is a young guy. Uh, honored to say I wore the same colors as the man. Condolences to the Bellevue family. Um, that's uh, Haley Wickenheiser, maybe the greatest women's hockey player of all time. John Bellevue was the classiest man. Returned every piece of fan mail with a handwritten letter. Nicest autograph in hockey. Uh, you know, in a days, you know, where, where, where athletes are legitimately fearful of, um, uh, especially today with today's computer technology, of uh, copying their signatures. I remember when I uh, used to go to uh, New York Giants practices when I was a kid. Uh, my grandparents were f uh, friends with uh, George Young. Uh, he was the uh, general manager of the New York Championship, New York Giants, two, two championships with the Giants. Uh, I noticed the players would scribble, and I was just like, you know, you can give me something, you know. But it was just explained to me that um, that's not ex – they, they can't really afford to do that because of, of – of, He's selling their autograph and and uh, or reselling their autograph and, and and basically trying to sign checks, uh, but uh, apparently that didn't bother John Bellevue because Haley Wickenheiser remembered that. Um, it is it is really nice that that you know all these people in hockey they remember him in in such a way. Uh, I heard a, a clip of Wayne Gretzky said he was the classiest man in sports, uh, and uh, you know that you know I think that's what what, what classy men in general, uh, sort of suffer in, in, in a sense. People that, that are, cons I mean, I'm not a, cons I'm a gentleman. Uh, it's just not the way I do things. Uh, they, 
attract less attention because you sort of expect them to behave in a certain manner. Uh, and uh, I don't think it takes away from his legend, but maybe took away from uh, media attention that he uh, uh, certainly deserved more of. Uh, we're talking about uh, one of the great hockey players of all time. And don't be fooled by that 500 goal stat. Uh, that's a lot of goal. Uh, comparatively, you, you basically could double that. It's probably more, well, not double it, but that's probably more like 800. They didn't score goals uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s like they did really uh, what started under um, – Bobby Orr in the late uh, late seventies and continued um, with the the Islanders, Mike Bossy and of course Wayne Gretzky and the uh, whole Edmonton crew, uh, which is just a goal scoring um, bonanza uh, until the dead puck hour in the mid nineties. So I mean, don't 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 be and, and remember they retired this they put this guy right in the Hall of Fame. This is something uh, I don't know if they even did that for Wayne Gretzky if I'm not uh, and but they did give they did do something special for Wayne Gretzky retiring the number ninety nine. And I think they did put Mary Lemieux straight away in the Hall of Fame, which is awful nice. So they don't do this kind of stuff for your, uh, you know, Joe Average. They do this for, for legends. And John Bellabue was certainly one of them, and he will be missed. And Shot from the Point gives its condolences from the entire team. We couldn't be more sincere um, to his family. Uh, I know it's rough, but uh, know that um, he lived a wonderful, uh, impactful life, if, if that's such a word. I'll be honest with you. Do you have anything else to t talk about, John? Because I do have some other stuff. Uh, yeah, I would actually like to encourage anyone that is listening right now, especially if they're a Canadian um, or maybe a Hamps fan, to call in and give us uh, your take on um, this uh, this event. Uh, you yep. can reach us at 718-395-7660. 718-395-7660. Very good. You're stealing my spots. Very, very, very good research, uh, um, uh, Dave. I'm very proud of that. that that's, that's really good. And you are more than welcome to come in. Call in, and you also can Skype us a shot from the point. Uh, I heard, you know, Dave and me mentioned this Monday, uh, Dead on Dave. Uh, I've heard rumors that the Devils practices are actually, um, this is just unbelievable. They're, they're optional. And uh, last night, um, Yarmir Yager took a, a questionable hit, uh, and they just laid him out, and the Devils just sat around and uh, did nothing. Uh, Pete DeBoer was quoted as saying via Sean uh, Gentile, Jean Juliet, I can't say his name because I'm bad with French names. If one of our guys had done that to Crosby, it would have been World War IV. Uh, good point. If that's true and if he said that, um, well, how, how do you build any kind of, um, it, it, of course, you know, if that's true, how do you build any sort of, uh, oh, the calls are coming in. Uh, I'm going to pick one. Wow, everybody's calling in. I'm gonna t I'm gonna take one, and here it is. Uh, shot from the point. You are on. Shot from the point. You are on the air. Hello, sir. Yeah, dude. What's up? Who's this? It's Roy from Florida. Roy from hey, Florida. Roy. You got anything on John Bellevue? I don't give a shit about that dude, man. I I, I want to know what's going on with the Bruins, man. What do you guys think? Thank you. Shot from the point, you're on the air. <laughs> what do you expect from hey a guys. Panthers fan? <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, Ben, how are you? How are you? Uh, I'm Glad doing you called uh, in. good uh, in the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our condolences, seriously. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, we, we all need uh, condo condolences uh, when we lose uh, someone like him. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, the well. ultimate captain. Absolutely. Absolutely. My best player is uh, Mark Messier. Uh, for me, uh, he's the ultimate captain, but uh, Bellevue was there before. Mm -hmm. How do you feel Bellevue uh, affected the culture in Quebec with what he did? The culture. The hockey culture. In different manners, uh, in the sense, uh, the way he, he stood, um, he was revered uh, by a lot of people uh, because uh, he was a class act. Uh, I guess, um, I think uh, they thought of him uh, for becoming a governor uh, general of Canada. No kidding. I didn't know that. Yeah. He received yeah, he the highest a... order. He, he received the Order of Canada in 1989, the highest uh, award and medal available to a civilian here in Canada. Was he a political man? No, he, he was approached. Uh, they asked him uh, to become a senator, but uh, he refused. 
He refused. All of those offer, offers. Well, another proved- great re- another, another reason why he's so great. Yeah. Well, we don't yeah. Need more I mean, politicians. He, he, he didn't get into politics, which is the most disgusting game at all. He's obviously he was an absolute class act if he avoided that. Um, uh, absolutely. For me, for for me, it's almost the, the, at the same level as uh, Maurice the Rocket. I have the same feeling. Uh, wow. As when I uh, we lost uh, Gary Carter too. So uh, it, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough. tough. There, there's something uh, in our core that. Uh, that has left, uh, but but he was a great man. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you know what? If if I can comfort you at all, uh, Ben, uh, you, you couldn't ask for a better life. And I think the reason no. his life was so good, or at least part of that, was because of who he was, how he carried himself, and he is a perfect example. He is a perfect role model. Uh, if if we can all live as well and as classy as John Bellevue. Uh, then uh, we've actually succeeded uh, in this uh, in, in this uh, crazy game of ours. So I, I maybe you could take comfort in that. Uh, I think that's the, the the nicest way I could put it, um, or, or the best way I could put it. Uh, uh, what have you? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to like Matt Kazar and what have you, Ben. I'm gonna see if we can get oh, some uh, okay, more yeah. fans. Have on. a nice day, guys. Thanks All for your right. call, Ben. Take care, take okay, care Ben. Oh, sorry, that I cut him off too early. I'm such a jerk. Hey, um, Roy. I know you're a big loyal fan, but Jesus Christ, we're we're doing a friggin' um, uh, uh, awake here. A man's yeah, dead. Yeah, I mean Christ Jesus. Sake. I love you to death, but I mean, uh, uh, do that on tomorrow's show for Christ's sakes. Or shot from the point live. I mean, come on. Do it tonight. I'll monetize this. But that yeah, or call monetize this. Jesus, I I I I can't I can't do that when I'm 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 doing a. a what do they call that? And what do the Catholics call that? I forget. Um, yeah, it's like a wake for Christ's sakes. I mean, geez, let's see if I can get um, uh, good old Matt Kazar because he tried. To, uh, we got three calls in at once, so uh, I'm gonna try to add Matt in there uh, as well. And then because uh, he always has uh, uh, the the greatest things to say, uh, if you ask me, one of our greatest calls. So we'll give him a call. Matt, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Matt. Speak up a little bit. Uh, Do you hear me? Uh, not, not as good as I usually can. Speak up. Yell on that mic. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. Go ahead. All right. Um, it's a real shame what happened, obviously. Mm-hmm. And many, many years ago, when I asked my dad who's his favorite player, he never said uh, Gordie Howe. He never said The Rocket. He said Jean Beliveau. And really? um, obviously, I've never seen him play. Mm-hmm. But from what I understand, um. What made him special wasn't necessarily his on-ice uh, plays, even though he was a really, really good player. Mm-hmm. But just his image, he was, as you said, he was the ultimate gentleman. Yeah. And every once in a while, he'd assist to a game in the Bell Center. Mm-hmm. And not once did the fans not give him a standing ovation. No. So he has the respect from, uh, from entire, the entire Quebec. Mm-hmm. And... If I were to compare him to another Habs legend, Guy Lafleur, yeah, I mean, I, I've never seen him play either. But I did. He played for the Rangers. Yeah, no, I got but lucky I don't want to. I don't want to um, kind of bring him down or anything. Sure. But in interviews, Guy Lafleur, he wouldn't shy away from, from totally trashing the team. Yeah. I think it was last year where he said that Patrick was a pussy, and they were <laughs> never going to win with him. Not classy, but I kind of like that. I'll be that, honest with you. <laughs> that is, I agree. I agreed with what he said, by the way. But sure. you don't say that. I mean, you're a legend. Have some class. Yeah. Like John Beliveau was the complete opposite in the interviews. As Ben said, the way he stood up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. If just I could, have so if much I could defend um, not just Guy Lafleur, but uh, a per- personalities like uh, Guy Lafleur, real quick, I want the players to be who they are, and this is um, uh, it's, me and Dave Rose have kind of clashed on this. I don't care when when Nazem Kadri and uh, um, uh, and I, I don't want a situation because there already is a situation where players can't speak their mind. So I'm not going to throw him over the bus. But here's the thing, and I think this is the point that you're getting at, whether you know it or not, because well, I know everything. Um, if you carry yourself like John Bellevue, you will command respect. If mm-hmm. you carry yourself like G- uh, Guy Lafleur and call him a pussy, uh, essentially, uh, uh, call call Max Pacioretty a pussy, people are going to look at you differently. Now. 
if you're willing to sort of take that in and take the responsibility to be to be outspoken, to 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 be brash, uh, which I think I know something a little bit about. Um, it, it, that's fine, but you will never be looked at ever like John Bellevue if you carry yourself that way. So I think that is a really good point. Uh, certainly not, but I I do I got to be honest with you. I want the players to be themselves. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm like one of those guys that, um, you know, let me hear your your stupid racism and stuff. I want it all out there. I want it all in the front. I, I don't, I, I don't, uh, but you are responsible for what you put on the airwaves, what you tell reporters, um, but I, I want them to be themselves. So I, I don't want to bash them too much, and I don't want to bash personality types like that. But just goes to show you, it's better to act like John Bellevue. Because, I mean, Jesus, we took two calls from Quebec, um, uh, and, and you can hear it. You can hear it in the people of Canada and how much it hurts, it hurts them. I mean, let's face it. I mean, he wasn't a young man. Um, and, and unfortunately, um, this is, uh, I mean, we're going to die one day. And, and uh, you know, even, a, even great men die. And uh, it's, it's awful tough to, um, it, I guess it's awful tough, you know, when you grow up with somebody. I guess for me it was Mickey Mantle. Uh, you did, never thought there would be a world without Mickey Mantle. And I think there's a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, growing up in New York area, but I think there's a lot of uh, people right now, even young people like Matt. Matt, you're only 20, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm 19. You're 19. I mean, Matt doesn't know a no world with without John Bellevue, and I don't think your dad does either. Yeah. So this is my dad. Your... My dad was devastated. He yeah. he woke me up at midnight. Oh so my I god! He heard it on the radio. Oh my god! Well, uh, give um um give your best uh, um. Uh, to from me and, and the whole team to your father and uh, you tell him I went through it too um, me and my dad got in a really really big fight um, and I actually moved out when I was like six, 17 or 18 or something like that because of this stupid fight and then I ended up moving back in and because uh, I, I couldn't stand watching the uh, the um, uh, the uh, news stories about Mickey Mantle's passing without talking to my father about it so I, I think I have some idea what you're going through um, I'll tell you, you take it easy, Matt, and uh, we're going to finish up uh, the stuff. Um, so, uh, we're going to finish up the uh, show. Good call as always, brother. Take care, Matt. Take care. Thanks, guys. Boy, man, it's, uh, you know, when you're a sociopath like me and you can't um, really understand other people's feelings, uh, and I don't, I have a real difficult because um, the only thing I care about is my own feelings. It's, it's, it's very confusing for a sociopath to sort of, understand uh um the, the sort of the devastation and and the feelings of quebec but i think i related pretty well what do you think <laughs> yeah you did a good job yeah and uh, you know, no, we, I'm, we, well, I'm working we, on we, it we sincerely are um saddened by uh yeah. by the passing of Bellevue, and uh, we do want to extend our condolences to Absolutely. listeners fans yeah. and to the people in quebec and for somebody like me um that that can't put themselves in your shoes uh it's 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 helping me understand <laughs> what it's like it's tommy's therapy it's my therapy that's because you, you should feel sorry for me as somebody with um uh anti-social personality disorder <laughs> um and i i'm learning i'm learning um and what have you well i've always tried to get jokes even out of the even out of um a bad situation like this but i couldn't be more sincere um it's 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 rough it, it's rough when you lose your heroes you know what i mean it's, it's rough when you lose your heroes. Um, and uh, I think we should end it right there. Um, I think this is good before I go and tell some other fucking ridiculous joke that, that, that completely discredits me. Wait a minute. I have no credibility. I'm on fucking YouTube. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, great show. Great, 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 great show. Um, uh, you, you did outdid what I thought you would do. You're the perfect guy to have on in a situation like this. Thank you, Coach. Uh, tune in tomorrow for... Um, Tune in tomorrow for um, uh, both uh, um, Dave Rose and Dead on Dave. And, uh, we'll see. We'll, okay, those are actually the best shows, the Thursday shows. The last two I thought were, were pretty amazing. Let's go over last night's games in the National Hockey League. Oh, did I close that thing? Uh, whatever. Uh, Nashville gets beaten by the Carolina Hurricanes 2-1. Uh, to one. Ottawa goes down to the New York Islanders in overtime. The Islanders are for real, folks. They beat the Ottawa Senators. New Jersey can't put it together against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They take them one to nothing. The Vancouver Knuckleheads take the Washington Capitals for three. And the Tampa Bay Lightning, after beating the shit out of my Rangers the last couple times, uh, they go down to the Buffalo Sabres. 
No Connor McDavid for you. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the Florida Panthers uh, showing a lot. Roy's I, team. I, I, I tell you, yeah, Roy's team. They show a lot of heart. Um, you know, they're not terribly talented, but I think they might be a team for in the future. I don't know if they're going to be in Florida. Uh, they go over the Detroit Red Wings 4-3. to Good job over there. Dallas Stars woes continue. They get taken by Toronto 5-3. to You watch that game? Yeah, I was shitty. He was boring. It was so okay. Shitty was boring. Uh, and, of course, the Calgary Flames, my favorite team to make playoffs, which nobody even said I was nuts. Uh, they take okay. the uh, Yotes 5-2. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Um, go down. They stink. They yeah. suck. The Flyers suck. Uh, they get beat by the San Jose Sharks 2-1. to one. And the Boston Bruins, uh, they have, um, <laughs> they get beat by the Los Angeles Kings. I do not think that we are not going to see the Boston Bruins in um, the Eastern Conference uh, Finals. Uh, tonight's game is just for the National Hockey League, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Montreal Canadiens go up against the Minnesota North Stars, I'm going to just, you know what, I'm just going to start calling the teams what I want to call them. You know that? Because <laughs> it, it was Go always it. Minnesota North Stars for me. So it, it's always going to be that way. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, um, the, Edmont, the Edmonton Oilers take uh, on the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, you know, that's something I didn't mention. This is, uh, th- th- this is actually kind of quite interesting. Um, what do I got over there? The, uh, let's see, uh, Michael Hutchison, he actually leads the league in save percentage over there in Winnipeg something to keep an eye on. Oh, and the Edmonton Oilers are a story in their own. They're what I wanted to cover yesterday. Uh, they've lost 10 in a friggin' row. Uh, they, they, what, what's going on in Edmonton is just laughable. Everybody needs to go. Kevin Lowe needs to go. McTavish needs to go. And that team needs to be disassembled. Um, Matthew Kassar is absolutely correct. There's too many first-round draft picks that have no leadership ability and no ability to be led by any way. Oh, and get rid of that coach, Dallas Aikens, too. That's what you get by putting a player's coach in with a bunch of sensitive generation fucking Y and, and uh, millennials. Millennials. There you go. There you go. Philadelphia Flyers will probably embarrass themselves against the uh, Anaheim Mighty Punks uh, over there in um, – Anaheim. That'll be the late night game, 10:30 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been in the crease of Tiny C. Tune in tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for more. See you later. Oh, and uh, Power Play CJ, if you're listening, I, I kind of want to work with you. I think there's something there. We can help each other out. The channels are around the same uh, level, and uh, you know, I think maybe we could benefit from some kind of mutual um, uh, project or something like that. Joe Conan doesn't. Why can't I? See you later, everybody. Bye bye. Peace, John Bellevue.